My name is Peter Schmidt. I'm a senior consultant with NEC Australia. Um, the following demonstration was created to showcase some of the uh, latest functionality available in Office 2013, um, in particular the Power BI tools, and it uses some uh, crime statistics data that was published by the local newspaper recently. So um, they made available the data to download via their website, and, and here it is in PDF format. And we see there's a lot of a lot of information in there, but it's not really in a usable format. So what I'm going to do is bring it into Excel and analyze it. Uh, the first thing I need to do is to get it into Excel. So I'm going to use a new bit of functionality in Word 2013, which is its ability to open a PDF file. So I've selected the file, uh, brought it into Word, and what I'm going to do is select the table containing the data and copy it so that I can then paste it into Excel. Okay, so as you can see, um, it's more or less the same look as it was in the PDF document. I've now selected the table, I'm copying it, and I'll now flip over into Excel and paste that data in. Now, we can see it's done a pretty good job of bringing the data in. However, a couple of the, the columns have uh, shifted across um, so I've got a little bit of tidying up that I need to do. Um, and the other thing I want to do is, is just enter my own heading names as well. Um, so I'm just going to go and do that. When I finish doing that, the other thing I'll do is, um, just to make it easier to view, is to format this as a table. So here's my data taken from the PDF file via Word, put into Excel, um, and it's now ready uh, as a source for my analysis. So what I'm going to do is uh, close that, open up a new Excel file and use the Power Query tool to bring that data in. So Power Query is a new tool, it's a free add-on for Excel. Um, you can think of it as being like a, a, a data macro, a data import macro. So the first thing I do, I select the ribbon and from the ribbon I select uh, that I'm going to import the data from an Excel file. I'll select my crime statistics table that I just created and the query editor window will open up. So the first thing I need to do is to select the worksheet that has my data in it <clears throat> and um, I need to tell the query that I want to use the first row as column headings. The next thing I want to do is I don't need to bring in all of the columns. So I, for example, I don't want the totals column, so I'm just going to delete that. And then in order to do my analysis, um, because the, the data is already cross-tabulated, it's not really in a great format for me to do the analysis. So what I'm going to do is select all of the columns except for the first one, and then unpivot the data. Okay. Um, now that's something that um, whilst you could do it via the old query tools, it wasn't very easy, and particularly the unpivoting. You'll also see that all of the steps that I've done have been saved, so I can go in and edit these as I want um, in the future. Okay, so I've done that. I click on the Done button, and there's my data in Excel now um, in the new format. So the next thing I need to do is to load the data into my data model. So Excel has a new in-memory engine called PowerPivot um, that uses this X-Velocity engine that allows it to uh, process hundreds of millions of rows of data in memory in, in near real time. Uh, it's incredibly powerful. So what I'm going to do is select the PowerPivot menu, go into Manage That, and now I just need to finish creating my data model. So there's a couple of things I need to do to the data just to um, finish off um, preparing it for analysis and the, the first one of these is that uh, um, later on I want to uh, plot the data onto a map and so uh, in order to do that I need to give a bit more information um, as to where these suburbs are so I'm going to add an extra column in that says state and I'm going to hard code it to West Australia and uh, so I'm just going to enter a very simple formula um, and put that into my model. And I'll just move that column over so it's uh, next to suburb. Uh, 
Uh, the next thing I need to do, I just want to change the column names um, for a couple of the columns. So um, the first one will be uh, the value column and I want to change that to say uh, number of crimes. And I also want to change the um, attribute column and call that crime. Now I could have done that actually as part of my Power Query import routine. I just forgot to do it. Um, it's no problem, I can do it here. Now I've also uh, going to create a measure that totals up the number of crimes. Um, so it's very similar syntax to standard Excel. Um, so it's just using the sum formula, but it's the sum of the column. Um, there's no rows, it's a dynamic formula that will recalculate depending on the number of rows. But you'll notice I've got a little error message uh, up here, basically saying that um, although the data is imported, it thinks it's text at the moment. Um, so all I need to do to fix that is just select the column and then from the ribbon change its data type from text to, in this case, whole number. Um, you now see that my error message has gone. And then the other thing I'm just going to do is format my measure. So you can see there's just over uh, 56,000 crimes um, for the, uh, the last year. So I'm just going to format that as a whole number and use a, a thousand separator. Okay, so that's my uh, data prepared in Power Pivot. I'm now ready to do some analysis on this. So uh, the first thing I'm actually going to do is create a, a pivot table in Excel. And I'm going to put this on a new worksheet. Um, and it's very similar to um, the pivot tables um, from previous versions of Excel. The main difference though is because it's running off the Power Pivot model, it's not only very, very quick, it can deal with um, millions of rows of data. You're not limited to the number of rows in a worksheet. The Power Pivot model can contain hundreds of millions of rows of data if I want. So, created a very simple pivot showing the suburb and the total number of crimes in those suburbs. But I now want to be able to filter that data and I'm using uh, a feature here called a slicer and I want to slice by uh, the type of crime. Um, so I've created my slicer, uh, I'm just going to uh, apply a little bit of format into this. And then immediately I can start selecting values from the slicer and you'll see that my pivot table is filtering to reflect those values. Now, um, in order to make that a bit uh, more meaningful, I'm also going to sort the, the values in the pivot table from highest to lowest. Um, so now when I filter, I can see you know, the worst um, suburbs for, in this case, assault, or for burglary, graffiti, and what have you. Okay, so again, Simple pivot table, but very, very quick and, and easy to create. Now, what I'm going to do now, I want to uh, go back to Power Pivot and I'm going to create uh, another pivot table. And in this case, uh, what I want to do is actually show um, a heat map of the data. So, again, I create it on a new sheet, start off as before. Um, in selecting my suburb for my rows, the number of crimes for my column, but this time I'm going to add the type of crime as a column heading. So I'm back to a, a crosstab table very similar to the PDF from where I started. However, because this is now in Excel, what I'm able to do is actually apply some, um, some formatting to this, some conditional formatting. So what I'm going to do is um, for each column is highlight the data um, with the, the worst areas shown in red, the best areas shown in, in green. So I'm just going to go and do that across a um, so bit of time. I've, I've now done that for all of the columns. And immediately you can see that uh, whilst there's certainly some areas are, are bad across the board, there's other areas where there are particular hotspots, whether, um, so for, for example, here um, we're going to have a look at. Uh, Rockingham, which has uh, is particularly bad for uh, motor theft. So just applying a simple formatting um, to a crosstab table 
immediately you start to see some patterns in the data and uh, um, it just sort of brings it to life. Now the next thing I want to do is actually uh, plot the data on a map. So I'm going to use a new feature which is uh, at the moment it's called GeoFlow but it's going to be called Power Maps and this is a really really cool way of, of plotting geospatial data. So the first thing I need to do is tell uh, GeoFlow, um, give it some ge geography information. So I'm going to select um, the state and the suburb as my two geography um, parameters. Now you see that um, the state it's already recognized. Suburb though, I need to say that's the equivalent to city. And you'll see in the bottom left hand uh, of the corner of the screen that the, the system's actually going using a, a web service, a Bing web service to go and work out coordinates for all of my suburbs. Um, it's doing that in the background. Um, so I've also said that I want to create this as a heat map and I want to use the total number of crimes as the, the value that I'm plotting on my heat map. So I'm just going to layer, uh, uh, assign a name to this layer and uh, I'll resize the legend and you can see there's a little cluster of, of data on my map of Australia. Uh, so what I'm just going to do now is just spin it round um, and start to zoom in on this. Um, and as we get closer and closer, um, I can tilt tilt the map slightly, and immediately we can see um, the various hotspots around the city and and the surrounding suburbs. So <clears throat> whilst a lot of the crime is centred around the city itself, we can see that. Uh, um, as we move out a little bit, um, there's uh, particular crime hotspots around Armadale um, to the south there, and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more. Um, and also on the bottom uh, left down there, you can see um, another hotspot. So that's quite interesting. But I, what I want to do now is look at what type of crimes. Uh, are being committed in those areas. So uh, what I'm going to do is go in and add a new layer uh, to my analysis. And again, I have to select the geography as before. So I'm going to select the, the state and suburb. Now this time I want to plot this as a column chart, but I want uh, an additional category to sh um, be displayed. So the height of each column is based on the number of crimes and the, the type of crime determines the color of the column. Um, and initially I'm just going to display this as a stacked column. Again, I'm just going to resize the, uh, the key um, and just move it out of the way. Now, um, in this case, because I've got that third dimension, I need to tilt the map over slightly and immediately you can start to see um, the relative sizes of the different types of columns. Um, again, there's another way of seeing where my uh, particular crime hotspots are. Um, now, if I want to see the breakdown by the crime type, I'll change it from being a stacked column to a clustered one. and. Uh, and now again I can pan around, zoom in, um, here we are at Rockingham um, and as we noted before um, it's particularly bad for car theft. So Geoflow has one final trick in that uh, if you're actually telling a story with the map you can create a number of scenes so uh, what you can do is just uh, click on the add scene button, pan and zoom around to uh, a new view of the data and uh, you can play around with the, the timings of it and so on and then when you finish you actually can create a tour and that will create like a, a video film 